Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a review on the Holosun Ames, otherwise known as the Chinese mailbox of death. But before we do, it's time to acknowledge the sponsor of today's video. The sponsor of today's video is Excess Sights. So I've known about Excess Sights for a very long time now. They're very well known throughout the firearms community for having great pistol sights. I actually have a pair of my Glock 19 right now, which is their suppressor height, just night sights. But they also have their big dot sights, which is what they're very well known for. They also have shotgun and rifle sights, pretty much everything you need. So go check them out, links in the description and big thank you to them for supporting this channel. I'd also like to mention that Henry from Nine Hole Reviews has blessed this channel with a discount code to give you guys from Slate Black Industries. So if you use code BJO10, it'll give you 10% off sick M-Lock grips and accessories. Really good stuff. I use them on my guns and I would highly recommend them if you ever want to cover up those unsightly open M-Lock slots on your handguard. So go check out Slate Black Industries. But with that out of the way, guys, let's get into this video. So to get all the nerd shit out of the way, the Holosun Ames is a red dot sight with a 2 MOA dot and a 65 MOA circle. It has three settings, which is just the dot, the circle and the dot, and just the circle. I'm not really sure what you would use just the circle for. Maybe that's some high speed stuff that is like above my pay grade, but you know, it is an option. It also has two kind of brightness adjustment settings. One is the manual way, just like the standard, you use these two buttons right here to adjust the brightness up and down, but it also has a auto adjust kind of setting, which utilizes this solar panel on the top here where it'll sense kind of the brightness in your area and adjust the reticle to that brightness. Uh, I kind of tested this out uh, when I actually mounted this to my airsoft gun. Um, you know, it doesn't really work out so well when you're using this in a kind of a, it's like a normal kind of combat environment where there might be a variable lighting conditioning. So, you know, if like you're in a dark room looking into brightness or brightness and looking into something dark, the reticle is never going to be adjusted to what you need it to be. Um, so I would recommend just using the standard kind of uh, manual setting to adjust the brightness. Uh, this thing also, you know, like I said, has a, a solar panel on the top here. The solar panel is not to charge the batteries. It is just a backup in case the battery does die. The battery life on this thing is 50,000 hours, and that is if it is on. So this thing has shake awake technology, which means that if this thing is just standing still for a prolonged period of time, the optic will actually shut itself off. And then when it's jostled or moved in any way, it'll turn itself back on. I've actually had it on this setting the entire time I've owned this optic and I haven't noticed any issues with it. So you can turn that setting off, but I've left it on and I haven't noticed anything issues where like I pick up this gun and the optics or the, uh, the reticle is not there. So with all the official specs out of the way, what's it like to actually use this optic? So I got this thing about six months ago from Gun Mag Warehouse. So know that I did not pay for this optic. It was sent to me from Gun Mag to do a review on, uh, though I did pick it out for myself because they just offered to send me an optic from their site. And I wanted the new Holosun optic because it was around that time that this thing was first coming out and the NDA was lifted on it. So everybody was like posting about it at the same time. So kind of had my own questions about it. So I picked this optic, they sent it to me, immediately started using it, put it on a couple different my AKs, an AR, a SIG 556, and I really just grown to love this optic. I love the sight picture on it. I love the different like adjustment settings it has. Um, and you know, after I kind of got my fill on using it at the range, I really wanted to test this thing out in a different kind of way. You know, what was it like to engage people with? <laughs> I, uh, I threw it on an airsoft gun actually, and I started using it at my, my local airsoft field just to see what it was like to use this optic in kind of a more combative environment. And like a lot of that stuff was like telling in like the different settings, like the brightness adjustment setting. That's when I figured out that was not a, it's not such a good thing to use in like an actual defensive situation because I was finding that, you know, when I was moving through buildings and stuff like that, 
that the, the brightness was never correct for what I was actually aiming at. But other than that, you know, I actually, this optic was a really good airsoft gun optic as well because with the circle and the dot, as long as I got somebody inside that circle and I started blasting, um, I typically would hit them. And, you know, I think that's indicative of what that kind of reticle is like to use in a more CQB kind of environment because airsoft is all CQB just because of the range of it. And it worked out really well. Another reason I like this <laughs> mostly for airsoft, but also on real steel, um, is these windows right here. So this optic has these built in kind of like sacrificial lenses on it where you can flip these things up and down. And honestly, I've just kind of left them up the entire time because I really don't notice a difference whether I have them up or down when it comes to like the sight picture. Sometimes like one's flipped up, one's down, both up, both down. Um, but I typically I just leave them up just to protect the lens, especially in airsoft. I don't want a BB crack in the lens. Um, I know I've had a couple lens strikes on this and it hasn't caused any damage. So these things are pretty strong. But if one does break, I've heard that you can buy replacement uh, sacrificial lenses for these things or lens covers. But after testing it on some airsoft guns, guys, um, you know, I decided to put it back on a real gun. That's why I have it on my AK-74 right now. I really love this setup. This thing comes, you know, when it back then, it came just with a lower one thirds um, mount on it. I think now you can buy um, aftermarket mounts, which makes it higher or lower. But I do like this height when it comes to on AK mounted here on the on the Texas Western's dog leg dust cover because it kind of, I prefer my optics to be mounted kind of high, especially if you're using night vision, you can easily passive aim through this thing while under nods. Uh, no problem versus if it's mounted lower like when i had this thing on ar that's what i found in airsoft um use trying to use it for passive aiming and that i really had to cram my head down to get behind it but you know mounted this high like on an ak it works very well so i know you can buy aftermarket mounts now which will make this higher so if you're looking for that you can, that's an option so 200 meters Sorry, the targets is really hard to see. This is all on me. There it is. Yeah, 400 meters. Did you get that? Yep. All right. I just need to know what the hold was. But overall, guys, I think the Holosun Ames is a solid choice if you're looking for a rifle red dot. Um, for, for about 400 bucks, I think you kind of get a lot, especially when, you know, for 400 bucks, you can buy an Aimpoint Pro. And I have an Aimpoint Pro. I love that optic. But honestly, this thing's pretty competitive, especially when you consider the features that it has, including the solar backup. So if the 50,000 hours of battery life dies, um, you have solar as an option as a backup, so you can ha harness the power of the sun to keep on shooting through the Chinese mailbox of death. Um, and also like the multiple different reticles, which uh, the Aimpoint Pro does not offer. So, you know, even though it's made in China, I th still think the Holosun Ames is a great option. That's about it guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at BlueGeneOperator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch which helps support this channel. Also make sure to hit that notification bell just so you can keep up to date whenever I decide to post a new video. But that's all I got for you guys and I'll see you guys next time.